Hello again and welcome back to the Fat Fish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this video I want to talk a little bit about vintage guitars. Uh, vintage guitars, I guess, like this. This is my 1974 Gibson SG Standard. Bit of a sobering thought actually that this is classed as a vintage guitar and it was actually made during my own lifetime. So it makes me feel a little bit old. Um, you know, when we talk about vintage guitars, we instinctively tend to think about maybe a little bit earlier than that, you know, like the 54 Strat or the 59 Les Paul, things like that. It was not just about the 50s and 60s. We're barreling through the years now, you know, we're into the 2020s now, and yes, 70s and so on could be classed as vintage. And vintage guitars are very sought after, uh, and you can tell that by looking at the, the, the market, the, the prices for vintage guitars are going up. Some are a little bit more attainable than others, but counter to that, other ones are more, more ludicrously priced than others. Uh, there's, there's definitely something about vintage guitars that makes them sought after and people want to pay a lot of money. So what is it? What is it that makes a vintage guitar special? And I would say if I had to sum it up in one word, that word is mojo. Vintage guitar, it's worn, it's been played in, it's got little battle scars, maybe a bit of damage, the odd repair here and there. You know, all these little marks that, that kind of tell the guitar's story. You know, this one's got a couple of dings in the back of the neck. Um, one of the side dots has fallen out. Don't know how that came to happen, but obviously it's all part of the guitar's, the guitar's heritage and you know, the life it's had before it came to me. And... I react with this guitar in a certain way. I just love playing it. The minute I picked it up in the store, it was like, yeah, this feels like a great guitar. Yeah, it needed new frets and, uh, and the nut was a bit worn out and needed replacing. But fundamentally, this was just a great guitar to play and I still enjoy playing it to this day. There was something about it, it just, it just felt right and it made me want to play it. It made me want to be creative. And that's part of the joy of, of, of instruments like this. Even if it's only psychological if it there's something about it that inspires you and makes you play better then yeah it's a it's a better guitar i mentioned the value um so i'll briefly talk about that some of these things are are really our investments if you're only buying vintage guitars as an investment you're missing the point. You're denying the guitar its opportunity to fulfill the reason it was built, and that's to, to make music. And I don't want to talk about vintage guitars as investment pieces. I want to talk about vintage guitars as, as creative tools, as, as instruments that you will use for, for playing music. So yeah, vintage guitars, there's just something about them. But there's always the worry if you're playing a vintage instrument what happens if it gets damaged? You know, it's, is it one of a you know one of a kind? There's only one guitar I found from 1974, with, which feels like this because of the characteristics it's got, the, the wear and tear it's had over the years. And there are other options. You know, there's options like this. So what's this? Well, this is a, a Fender Custom Shop Stratocaster. Uh, this is only two or three years old, um, but it's got the feel of a vintage instrument. Reason. It's a relic. Now, relicking is a bit of a controversial process. You know, some people will say, well, why do you pay somebody to damage your guitar? And it was a debate I had with myself when I got the, I wanted the custom shop Strat. Um, and I really did debate with myself whether I wanted to get it relicked or not. I played quite a lot of guitars um, from the custom shop before I got this one made for me. Some relicked some not, different degrees of relicking, and I kind of settled on, yeah, I want the relic guitar because it has the advantage of what the vintage has. It's it's built to a vintage spec, yeah, it's like the, the 50s profile neck, um, 50s style pickups and whatnot, and it's got some wear and tear on it. Admittedly, that was done by a guy in a factory in 2018, 2019, whenever it was I got this guitar built. Um, but the minute I picked it up, it just felt much more like I was at home with it and sort of bonded with it a lot more quickly than I did, say, with you know, with a, a Strat like that, which, which just felt like a new guitar uh, when I got it. It's not bad, it's just different. And there's something about, say, the Relic guitar kind of gives you the benefit of a, um, like the vintage feel, but possibly more affordable. Still an expensive thing to have. To have done but you know if 
if the worst happened and this guitar got lost or damaged or stolen or something horrible happened to it, I know I can go back to the Fender Custom Shop and say, I want another Custom Shop Strat built. Here's the check I got from the insurance company. Here's the specification. And I get another one of these. You know, if this was truly was a, an instrument from the 1950s, I, could, I couldn't really replace that. So you kind of have that little level of comfort with a, something, something like this that, okay, it's not the genuine vintage instrument. It can be recreated or, or replaced, but it gives you the vibe uh, and the mojo of, uh, of a vintage instrument because of the relicking and the way that it feels. And it's got the sound of the vintage instrument as well. These are, you know, 50s voiced pickups. So they've got that lovely sound that you would associate with a 50s Stratocaster. That SG, does that got a vintage sound? Well, let's go back and have a listen. Well, it sounds like this. I love the sound of this guitar. Um, reason being, it's the pickups. A lot of the sound of the guitar comes from the pickups. And these are, they're not vintage pickups. These are Seymour Duncan antiquities. Um, they're voiced on classic Gibson PAF pickups. And, you know, I was talking before about consistency. Back in the day, things weren't all precise and computer controlled. Some Gibson PAFs are awesome. Some Gibson PAFs, to be honest, sound a little bit rubbish. They haven't got quite enough wines on, or they've got a few too, too many wines, things like that. Because of the inconsistencies, just because it's a Gibson PAF doesn't make it awesome. These ones are replacement pickups from Seymour Duncan, who have kind of made them around the best, the sound of the best sounding PAFs that they could find. But they're not original to this guitar. I've got the original pickups from this guitar, um, but the guy who had it before me said, well, here's the guitar, here's the, the original pickups, but the ones that were fitted were these Seymour Duncan antiquities. It brings me to another point about vintage guitars and modifications and, and repairs. There's a little bit of an obsession with vintage guitar nuts about preserving the originality. Now, I'm not proposing you buy, you, if you've got loads of money, you go out and you buy a vintage mint condition 1954 Strat and immediately rip out the pickups and put a set of Dimarzios in. That's, that's seriously going to devalue the guitar. And be honest, it def kind of, it's kind of defeating the purpose. You buy a vintage guitar because it sounds like a vintage guitar. Anyway, sometimes the modification you make, it's it's worthwhile. The pickups that came in this guitar originally back in the 70s, they aren't the most awesome sounding Gibson pickups ever. They're the, if you're into pickups, they're the Tarback, uh, tarback uh, pickups. These ones sound better. If I did get obsessive and I want to return this guitar to vintage specification, I can put the original pickups in. But as it stands, this is a better guitar because it sounds better because of the, uh, the Seymour Duncans that I've got in it. But I've heard stories about people who will hold off on doing like a refret on the guitar. It's a vintage guitar. It's going to have wear and tear. Over time, the frets are going to get worn down. The guitar won't play as well. It needs new frets. But people say, oh, no, I can't refret it because I'll... these are the original frets. Yeah, but it's not as playable because the frets are worn. Get the frets replaced. I remember talking to a, a guitar tech uh, who'd done some work for me a few years ago, and he'd had a customer in uh, the day before me, had something like a 1960s Gretsch or something like that. And the volume control was 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 broken. Basically, volume controls over time, they have got moving parts that get sweat gets in and uh, corrodes things and dirt and grit get it, get in and wear and wear, wear things through. And the volume control was absolutely shot. So it had a replacement put in, which is good because it meant the guitar was functional and could be played. He'd gone to the guitar tech to pick the guitar up and said, OK, thanks very much. That sounds great. Uh, where's the old potentiometer? And the guitar tech said, well, you know, it's in the bin. It's you know trashed. It's in, it's in with the electrical recycling. It's 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 
it's useless. And the guy whose guitar it was was mortified. He said, well, but that was like an original 60s potentiometer. The, the guitar tech was, well, yeah, but it's pointless. What are you going to do? Put it in the guitar and make the guitar worse? You know, it, sort of like fetishizing the vintage aspect of the guitar to that degree just, just to me seems a bit silly. You know, other people have heard about getting getting a guitar refretted. Again, it's good. It makes the guitar playable. But wanting to get the original fret wire back so they can put it in the case and if they ever sell the guitars, here's the the original frets. Well, what use are the original frets? You know, don't obsess about the fact that it's a vintage guitar and you've got all the original parts. It's a it's a device. It's a thing for making music. And you've got to respect it for its age and the way it was made and, and all the, the parts and the components and so on. But don't get you know so wrapped up about, oh, I've got to preserve every little bit of originality with it. No, be, be sympathetic, but at the end of the day, it is a tool of the trade. Now, when I had the Strat out before, I was talking about the relicking process and how it had made it feel like a vintage guitar. Literally, it was a vintage spec guitar, but it was a new guitar that had been made to feel old by relicking. Controversial process, but it uh, it does the job. Now, an important thing to, to say is don't ever, ever confuse relicking with abuse. I've seen videos of people doing relicking before, professional relicking, and it's a su surprisingly precise process. It's not a case of just, as some people, tend to think it's just like smashing the guitar up and beating it up. No, it's done sympathetically to, to sort of emulate wear and tear that the guitar would get in, in real life. So if you've got a brand spanking new guitar, you know, like say that Telecaster there behind me, that's that's a new guitar. Well, it was a new guitar about five years ago. Um, but any wear and tear that it's got has just come from natural playing. It's I'm, I'm not, what I'm not going to do is throw it around and, and abuse it so that it gets scars, that's more likely to damage the guitar and make it worse. If you're going to age, let a guitar become naturally relict, do it through natural wear and tear, not abuse. You, need, you still need to treat your, treat your guitar with respect. Now that guitar will probably take a lot longer to, to wear down than other ones because it's got a like poly finish on which is pretty hard wearing designed to uh, almost like to resist natural relicking but no i'm not going to take a guitar and beat it up and abuse it because that's just not fair on the guitar that's that's not relicking so that's just that's just damaging i have got other guitars old guitars like my thompson that's got some very very nice wear and tear on it because i've had that for a long time it's had a lot of a lot of use and there's places where the lacquer's worn through on the back of the neck and all that sort of thing and that's all part of the feel, but that's all natural wear and tear. I've never, you know, I've never smashed that guitar up. That's all honest relicking. So, yeah, vintage guitars, you'll see them advertised in, in, in online and in magazines, and they're selling for ridiculous amounts of money. Sometimes you might think, well, why is someone going to spend all that money? Hopefully that's kind of explained why, because there is a certain something about the sound that you get from a vintage guitar, the way it feels, just the whole package that makes you makes you play differently. And if you've got the, the money to spend, it's, it's in a way, it's justifiable uh, because you are getting something that you wouldn't get from just going down to the store and buying a new guitar. There's the halfway house, there's the getting a, a new guitar relict. It's not the same as, as having a vintage guitar, but it's, it's getting close to giving you the experience. Vintage guitars, yeah, they're an investment, but first and foremost, they're guitars. They're not, you know, these aren't, I wouldn't treat these the way I would, you know, like investment bonds or stocks and shares or something. It's fun, first and foremost, it's a guitar. If it if appreciates in, in value over time that's great but i'll buy this as a guitar not as a not as a financial uh, financial investment and lastly i can't stress it enough if you've got a, a new guitar and you like the idea of vintage looking relic guitars don't abuse your instrument to try and get it to there that stage play it honestly and it will start to take on that relic feel over time the more that you play it okay that's me off my soapbox. 
Thanks very much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please click like down there if you really enjoyed it and you want to see other videos that are posted onto the channel. And please click subscribe, which is also down there, and click the bell icon so you're notified when I uh, update the channel with any new videos. If you want to leave a comment, you're more than welcome. I don't always see comments left on videos, so if there's a specific thing that you want to ask me, whether it's about guitars, guitar playing, music theory, anything at all, you're better off going here, filling that form in, send your question in, and I'm guaranteed to see it that way, and I can get around to answering your question in a future video. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.